Y'all happy to be here today? You made it another day's journey. Hallelujah. Let's just open up with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before you, Lord, asking you to have your way in this place, God. God, we're asking you to move like only you can move, Father. God, we're asking you to forgive us for any and everything that we may have said, done, or thought that was contrary to your will, Father. God, we're asking you to just have your way, God. God, we're asking you to come in here and clean us up from the inside out, Father. God, we're asking you to bless the man of God that's going to bring the word on today, Father. Endow him with preaching power, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Give him the strength, God, to deliver your word to us, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless this worship experience, God. God, have your way, Father. Move in this place, God. God, we're asking you to bless the people that's on their way, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we're asking you to give them traveling grace and mercy, Father. God, we just want you to do something new in this place, God. Restore us, Lord. Refresh us, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we know that you are the one true and living God. That's why we enter into your, your gates with thanksgiving, Father. We enter into your courts with praise, Father, and we ask that you just have your way, Lord. And we'll be more than careful to give your name the praise, God, the honor, and the glory. And it is in Jesus' name that we do pray on today. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody love God forever? Forever and ever. No matter what you're going through, you can truly say you love God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Worship Him for all of our days. Let's 
worship him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And then we'll say, you're holy. You're holy forever. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're holy. You're holy. Yes, Lord. And you're mine. If you're worshiping forever, put your hands together. Hallelujah. He's mighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody know he's a great God? He's great and mighty. Hallelujah. Just think of what he's done for you. That alone should tell you how great he is. Hallelujah. Did he wake you up? Did he start you on your way? Did he help you through the week alone? Come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise in here. Hallelujah. Let's just worship him just for a little while. Thank you, Jesus. Say great are you, Lord? 
until you come. Our thorn can't be moved until you come. So we pour it out to you. It's your breath. 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 So breathe life into us. Breathe healing into us. Breathe joy into us. It's your breath. That's a good place to praise the Lord. Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You do know there's only one requirement for praise, and that's the ability to inhale and exhale. So if you're breathing right now, I want you to do whatever you do to praise God. I don't care if you clap your hands, if you stomp your feet, if you've got a leap for joy, if you want to take a lap around the room, I don't care how you do it, just let everything that has, yeah, if you want to spin around in a circle right now, every time I turn around, he keeps giving me a reason to praise him. You ought to high five two people and tell them, I don't care how you do it. You just ought to praise it. For every way he made, you ought to praise it. For every bill he paid, you ought to praise him. For every tear he dried, you ought to praise him. Every need he supplied, you ought to praise him. For waking you up this morning, you ought to praise him. For food on your table, you ought to praise him. For the activity of your limbs, you ought to praise him. You know the difference between your left hand and your right hand, you ought to praise him. You got a reasonable portion of your health and strength. You ought to praise him. Looked around and your family was doing well. You ought to praise him. You got a job to clock into. You ought to praise him. You ain't got a job, but you still got your lights on. You ought to praise him. You can put one foot in front of the other. You ought to praise him. You got a car to get to where you need to be. You ought to praise him. Let everything. Great are you, say it again, say it again. It's your breath. It's your breath. In our love, so oh, we pour. We pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. Yeah. It's your breath. In our love. So we pour. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. You're in the inhale, Yahweh. You're in the exhale, Yahweh. Pour it out. Man, I feel good. I feel like I'm surrounded by people that's glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live, but he put breath in my lungs. And I decided that every chance I get, I'm going to give him the praise that's due to his name. Old folk used to say, he didn't have to let me live, but 
said, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Be grateful for your presence along with the presence of the Lord that is here because I can feel him in the atmosphere. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we thank God for the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. God bless you. God bless those of you who are watching us on Facebook and or YouTube, wherever you are viewing us from now we are grateful to God for your presence thank you for watching us from the comfort of your home or perhaps you're on the road or at work or even perhaps you may be in a hospital room right now please know that the same anointing that rests in this house will arrest you there in your house and will visit you in your hospital room or on your job or wherever you may be but let me just go ahead and say shameless plug ain't nothing like being in the house nothing like being close to the fire but we thank you for joining us now and we pray that uh, you will be blessed continuously by what you continue to view from wherever you may be uh, to those of you who are in the room again we thank God so much for you if you are visiting with us thank you so much thank you so much you could have gone any place today let's give God praise for our visitors you could be anywhere else right now Waffle House said it best, you had a choice and you chose us. So thank you so much for choosing us today. And please send our love and our honor and our respect back to uh, whatever church you may be a part of, to your pastors and leaders there. Tell them Pastor White said hello. Uh, if you're sneaking away, if you're sneaking away, don't sell them I said anything. Amen. But we're glad that you're in the service with us. And then, of course, if you don't have a church home, if you feel moved, for this to be your church home, if you feel led for me to be the spiritual voice in your ear here in the earth, uh, you do not decide your pastor, you discover your pastor. And if this is your place of discovery, I'd be honored to walk this walk with you, to be there with you and for you during some of the highlights of your life and some of the low moments in your life as well, whatever the situation deems necessary, I would be honored to serve you as your pastor and FCC would love to be uh, your church family. We don't do everything right and we're not the best in the world, but I believe that we are the best when it comes to loving one another. Amen. We love each other. Amen. If you're going through, we'll go through with you. Amen. If you're struggling, we'll struggle with you until we can turn your struggle into a strive in Jesus' name. Amen. We lift each other. We care for one another. If you ain't got it, somebody sitting next to you might got it. And you and you good to go. You good to go. I'm telling you, we have each other's back like that. And, uh, and I believe that's one of the things that we do extremely well. Thank God for the genuine love that is in this room. All of our children who are 12 years of age and under some may already be in the back, but if you would like to be a part of Children's Church or if you would like for your child to be a part of it, uh, let's say amen for them. Happy birthday, Kinsley turned eight years old. Y'all give her a great big happy birthday clap. She got a hat on and everything with a pink dress. You shy. Amen. Save me a cupcake. If there's any back there, I can eat a little piece of that. I get a little piece of that. Gotta, when you get my age, you got to wash that sugar. Amen. We'll get a little piece of that. You know, knock some of that icing off. We'll be all right in Jesus' name. Amen. But thank you for those of you who are in the room on today. God bless you. Let's jump quickly into the Word so we can hurry up and get the Applebee's and y'all can get ready for the week. Luke chapter 4, St. Luke chapter 4, <laughs> verses 1, 2, and 13. St. Luke chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 13. I want to conclude our series on fasting and furious. This month we've been dealing with fasting. Has anybody been blessed by these messages that have gone forth this month? Amen, 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 amen. Whether or not you have been fasting or not, that's between you and God. But I just wanted to make sure that we drop this in your spirit don't miss the month of july because the month of july we'll be going into a new series entitled working um, month of july we'll be dealing with working in him what does it look like to work in him we've been talking about living moving and being in him we live move and have our beings next month we'll be on the subject matter of working in him would you please stand when you found luke chapter four i like feeling like i'm in church so let's stand I want you to say when you leave today that the preacher moved me. Amen. So I want you to stand for the reading of the word. The word moved me today. Amen. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 
and verse 2, and then we'll read verse 13. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And then skip with me to verse 13. It says, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Let all God's people say amen. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk today from this subject matter, when Jesus fasted. I want to talk about when Jesus fasted. What do we learn and what did we learn in Luke chapter 4 from when Jesus fasted? Again, I will point out to you that connecting with God often spells trouble. For those of you who walk with God for real, for real, you know that the statement that I've just made is extremely true because you haven't caught this much trouble since you've been trying to live right. Living right is good, but living right is not always easy. Seemed like when you were in the world, Everything was clicking on all cylinders. And some of the cares that you have now, you didn't have then. And that is the attack and the trick of the enemy. Because what he doesn't tell you is all the joy and the peace and the happiness that you're experiencing while you are not on God's side will only last while you're on this side. And that the good times don't always roll. It comes to an end. And then when we're on the Lord's side, all the troubles and the difficulties that we have with God, the conclusion is they only last on this side. And ultimately, there is extreme beauty at his right hand. There are pleasures and treasures forevermore. The beautiful thing about Jesus is that none of these things happen without him showcasing for us what it looks like to live under those situations. It is not as if God is so far away from us that he is not in tune with our infirmities. We have not a savior who is not conflicted with the infirmities of his people. And so just when you talk about being hurt and bruised and battered and people turning their back on you and all that good stuff, the truth is Jesus endured the same stuff. I mean, someone who had friends to walk off and leave them, and it wasn't just friends, but it was friends that had benefits from him. People that he did stuff for. And you haven't been hurt until you've been hurt by somebody you tried to help. You've never been let down until you've been let down by somebody that you loved. You hadn't been stabbed in the back until you've been stabbed in the back by somebody that you let them borrow a knife when they needed to cut some stuff out of their own. And Jesus is saying, I've been there too. I've done that. If you would examine Jesus' life before Luke chapter 4, we will know that the thing that he went through before this temptation of Luke chapter 4 was baptism. After baptism, he comes up out of the water and lo, the heavens were opened unto him and the Spirit of God in the form of a dove sat upon him, lighting upon him, and lower voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son 
in whom I am well pleased. And as soon as God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, the very next thing that happened is that he was led of the spirit into the wilderness. You go from being the recipient of spiritual accolade to becoming the servant of a wilderness experience. How do you explain being on the mountain and God is clapping for you? And the very next moment, up jumped the devil. You ever left church and within five minutes of exiting the door, here come the devil showing his ugly face, almost make you forget what you just got. Talk to me when you get to church. Look at your name and tell him, I hope it doesn't happen for you today. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope when you get out there on 20 and 59, 65, I hope when you get out on the road, somebody don't cut you off and call you to say something that you ain't supposed to say. But if it does, it ain't nothing new. As a matter of fact, I will point out to you that's generally how it flows. And Jesus does this for us. As a matter of fact, if you're taking note, go ahead and write this down. The first thing that we see when Jesus fasted was he set an example. Make sure you get that down. He, he set an example for us. Jesus did not fast because he needed to get closer to God. He's not fasting because he needs results and guidance and direction. Not for real, for real, but for real as an example, he shows us what it looks like. I mean, Jesus didn't have to get baptized. I mean, we get baptized when we confess our sins and Jesus had no sins to confess. We are baptized when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but Jesus don't have to accept himself. He knows who he is. He did it as an example for us to show us the relationship and the fellowship and the communion that we have with God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ himself. So when Jesus fasted, number one, he sets an example. Let the church say example. Here's the beauty in the example, and don't, don't miss this. He gets baptized one chapter temptation the next chapter watch this and he's in the wilderness which means he's in isolation no pew partner to slap no, nobody to turn to your neighbor and say what the preacher says he's by himself and amidst isolation he also has to deal with temptation. By himself, isolation. Being enticed by the words of the enemy, temptation. And on top of that, here it is, he's fasting. Y'all missed it. I don't mind going through something. You know when I start tripping? It's when I have to go through a whole lot of somethings at the same time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I, have, I have the spiritual fortitude, Miss Bunny. I, I have the spiritual fortitude to go through stuff. I know I'm not older than, than many of you in this room, but I'm 40 now, so I can say this, all right? <laughs> I've been walking with God long enough now. I used to couldn't say that when I was 17. I just met him yesterday, but I, now I've been walking with God long enough now till I can take a licking. I've seen him move in my life enough times now to not be moved when people move. 
I've seen him be consistent enough to not worry when people start changing. So I have the spiritual fortitude to go through some stuff. But it hit different when you are in a place where if it ain't one thing, it's another thing, and then got to deal with something on top of that anything. This is why this is critical, because Jesus ain't just fasting. He's fasting in isolation. And he's fasting during temptation. Here's what Jesus is saying. I know it's hard for you, but it's possible for you. Y'all, please don't tell the club but when I say this. Just cause it's easier said than done don't mean that it can't be done. High five your name and tell them you can do it. You, you, you can do it. You can do it. You, you, you can do it. I, Jesus is showing, watch this, that in addition to being sad, lonely, depressed, confused by yourself, you can go through that and be tempted. And on top of being tempted, you can also be fasting and it not even come nigh you. Here's what God is saying. I want to heighten your faith to the point that you can go through more than one thing at a time and still not look like you're going through anything at all. Who am I preaching? Look at somebody like you're serious about your life and, and tell them you can't tell by looking at me. But the truth is I'm going through a whole lot of stuff. Who, who am I preaching to? I'm going through a whole lot of stuff. You think I'm just fasting? You don't know that. Hey, I'm fasting. I'm in isolation. I'm dealing with temptation. I got some pains in my body. You wouldn't know it if I didn't tell you. I'm struggling financially. You wouldn't know it if I didn't tell you. But I have the fortitude to go through a whole lot of stuff. All at the same time. I pray for you that you would develop the strength to be able to be hit on every side, to be troubled on every side, but still not be destroyed. I, I, I'm praying that for you. As a matter of fact, I, I pray that God will give you supernatural strength that even when the devil thinks he's winning, he will be unsuccessful in crushing your spirit. I, I pray that you will get the kind of strength that you can come in here and praise God and people think that you praising God because everything is all right, but the truth is you praising God through your storm. You praising God through your mess. You, you praising God not because of, but in spite of what you're going through. He sets an example. Because here's what many of us do. Here's what many of us do. And, and just sort of look off if I'm talking to you. Um, you, ever, you ever had that conversation with God where you told God your terms and conditions? You know, God, I'll go through this, but I ain't going to go through this and that. I, I, I ain't going through both of them. I mean, if, if the devil going to be out here tempting me and I'm in isolation, you better believe I'm going to eat. <laughs> I, I ain't going to be fasting while I'm going through it. I mean, it... It's easy to fast at the house by myself and ain't nothing in the fridge, but, but if you expect me to fast and be around people on the fourth, I, I'll go through one, but I'm not sure how much I wanna go through on the side. You see, because if I got pain and pressure in one area, you better believe I'm gonna do something to level it off. I'm preaching somebody's story right here. Because you're good at a whole lot of stuff. And because you're so good in other areas, you just automatically flunk in another one. 
Lord, look, I, I don't bother nobody. I don't mess with folk. I give somebody the shirt off my back. When they call me, I'm there for them. But Lord, this weekend, it's going to be one for the books. I, I, I don't cuss. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't go out. But I got me a boot. And what we do ain't nobody business. I, I love the Lord. He heard my cry, pitied every groan. Long as I live and trouble rise, I hasten to his throne. But, but, but th this weekend, after all that I went through at work, that stress, that pressure, that pain, that scrutiny, I I'm going to drink a little something. No, I'm going to drink a lot of little something. It's a lot that I don't do. It's a lot that I don't do. I'm real good at, but, but, but I'm going to say what I want to say. And I'm going to say it how I want to say it. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied every one of my groans. But, but when folk make me mad, I cuss this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Because I already got all this other stuff stacked up against me and I'm doing so well. Can I get some credit? Can I get some credit? All I'm asking is just for a little respect when I get home. It don't have to be a whole lot, just a little bit. But, but, but if, if I got to go through all that, let me at least do this. And Jesus set an example. That said, I ain't taking no breaks. I'm going to be in isolation. I'm going to deal with temptation. And I'm going to do it all while I'm fasting. When Jesus fasted, he set an example to let us know you can deal with all of it. You, you, can, you can deal with all of it. I'm not going to speed this message to go to the end, but put a pen right there. We're coming back to that. That's number one. Here's number two. Write this down. After Jesus sent an example, make sure you write this down. He stayed effective. He stayed effective. I don't see that in the text. I know because we didn't read this part, but it's in there. Read it all of Luke chapter 4 when you get home. When the tempter came, here's what he started saying. I know you're out here hungry. Command these stones to be turned into bread. If you're the son of God, watch this. If you're a child of God, you, you ain't supposed to be hungry like this. He'll give you your daily bread and you out here hungry like this. You got all this power to make a change, to make a difference. Command these stones to be turned into bread. And Jesus looked at him and said, man shall not live by bread alone. It's easy to say that when your stomach full. But can you say that man shall not live by bread alone when your stomach growling? You know, it's been more than eight hours, you know. You, you, you know how you is when you miss lunch. You know how it is when you miss lunch, when you miss dinner. You, you ain't had your breakfast, you ain't had your morning coffee, you ain't had your medicine yet. It's a little different. But Jesus stayed effective. Watch this, because here's what God wants us to understand. Everything you could do don't mean you should do. Did you hear what I just said? Everything that you could do does not mean that you should do. Can I tell you what's going to mess some of y'all up? Some of y'all cousins them, because y'all cut from a different cloth. But some of y'all cousins them, they're going to get messed up because they messed around and realized I'm grown. I can go where I want to go, do what I want to do, say what I want to say, live how I want to live. 
Somebody messed around, turned 18, got a little peach fuzz on your chest. Girl, you off in high school now. You put a little blush on, put a little something under your eye, and you think you're somebody, you think you're grown now. Boys be whispering little stuff to you in your ear, telling you how cute you is, and now you think you can make some grown decisions now. And God is saying, everything that you could do don't mean that you should do. All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. You can drive a car and put one foot on the steering wheel if you want to. That don't make it a good idea. I believe God wants to save your soul and your brain in 2024. <laughs> Just cause you're hungry don't mean you need to eat the devil's bread. Stop playing Russian roulette with your relationship with God. Some of y'all gonna mess around and play truth or dare. And because you're a daredevil, you like to prove points to people but you prove nothing to God. He's trying to tell you, I'm trying to set an example for you. You can't receive everything that's offered to you. Just cause they offer more money don't mean you need to move. If it's gonna disturb or distract your peace, is it really worth? Just cause he asks you for your number don't mean you gotta give it to him. I don't care how handsome he was. He had his own car and Nice job and didn't live with his mama. <laughs> oh, just cause she got lips, hips, and fingertips don't mean she need to touch you. Don't mean she need to have privilege of access. Everything that's offered does not necessarily mean that it's God sent. He set an example that while he was going through it, he still kept the word of God in his mouth. Here's what I'm saying. If you're going through and you're struggling with something that's not being provided for you, can you still lift up the God who is able to provide even when there is no provision being made? I don't know who I'm preaching to in this room, but maybe three of y'all can attest to this. You, you held God up when it looked like you were being let down. That ain't for everybody. I, I know some of you, you don't ever go through nothing and you've been saved and it looked like it all the days of your life. But I have prayed for some stuff and it looked like God, he wasn't answering nothing. He didn't say yes. He didn't say no. He didn't say wait. He didn't say maybe. He wasn't saying nothing. But I still had to stand up and tell the goodness of the Lord. He stayed effective. Can I ask you a personal question? Can you stay effective even when you feel like you've been defected? Can you still show up for the appointment when you've been disappointed? It's easy to stay faithful when people are faithful to you. But can you be faithful to misery until your change comes? All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, can you speak his name when after you called his name, nothing changed? He's still speaking the word of God when he is hungry, he is being tempted, and he's in isolation right after he just came up from the wall. I know how you praise God when you get your income tax. I'm wondering, can you praise God when it's gone? Remember how you were telling everybody when you got that job? Is God still good when they give you a pink slip? I 
I know he's the rock of ages that are clear for you, but what happens when you hit rock bottom? Is God still God? when you hit rock bottom like he was when he was the rock of ages that were cleft for me and let me have myself to him. Jesus is setting an example, but then he stays effective because even when Satan came after him and said, listen, I'm going to show you all the worlds, all these houses, land, riches. He said, all you have to do is just bow down and, and worship me. Jesus looked at him and said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Because Satan tempting Jesus, knowing he's in isolation, temptation, no food, and he tempts him with something that would look like it would deliver him from his current state. But Jesus' mind wasn't gone even though emotionally he was going through because you do know that when you're emotional, you're not always rational. How many know that when your heart is broke, sometimes your head don't work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When your heart broke, your head don't work. That's why you was over there at 2 o'clock in the morning talking about I'm going over there. Supposed to be going to sleep. You got to go to work tomorrow. Them children got to get breakfast in the morning. And it's a school night. And you're talking about at 2 o'clock. You know what? I'm finna go over there. Look at your name and say, you better stay from over there and get your mind right. Get your mind right. You better let Jesus me and your broken heart and get your mind together. I'm finna go over there. You know, ringing doorbells and leaving, throwing eggs and all that kind of stuff. Jesus kept his right mind and his sobriety because Jesus understood, wait a minute, you offering me things in this world that I created. Stop letting people make you bow down to receive stuff that you would get automatically. You get with me, I'll pay all your bills. Wait a minute, my bills was paid before I met you. What is wrong with you? I'll take you out. Baby, I can take myself out. I, I know how to go to the movies. I got my own car, my own house, two jobs. We're smart, I'm bad, bro. You. I'm sorry, that went over somebody's head. <laughs> I-N-D-E-P. All right, I'm done. I'm through. 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 <laughs> and then another thing he said, then I'm done. He took, him, took him to a high point on the mount, on the pinnacle of the temple, and said, listen, jump down. Jump down. Hey, you ain't got a word? Because watch the devil using the word. Watch the devil using the word. He going to give his angels charge concerning thee. Lest that any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Meaning, jump off, you know God gonna catch you. Here's what the devil is saying in a, in a subtle, smart way, telling him to do something stupid. Jump down, God gonna catch you. Stop letting the fact that you and God close cause you to do stupid stuff and expect him to bring you out of it. Just cause you're saved don't mean you won't get burned if you touch that fire. Stand out there in the middle of the street if you want to. Somebody ain't paying attention on their cell phone. They gonna hit you. Jesus being tempted in isolation and fasting said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. God is so much God, but even God don't want to be tempted. And if God is saying, don't play with me, you better leave some of these folk alone. Talk to me when you get to church. God said, don't play with me. Look at your name and tell him, I don't play neither. I don't play neither. I, I love you, but I don't play. I, I quit school because of recess. I don't play. I ride in silence. I don't play the radio. Here's the deal. Jesus fasting to set us an example, and that is, can you stay effective? Can you stay effective? Can you get beat up and still go out there 
and get in the middle of the ring? Can you fight in the ring and in the corner and still go out and fight the real enemy? Can you speak his name when his name is not producing results right now? Can you still sing when you need somebody to sing to you? Can you still preach when you need somebody to preach to you? Can you still pray for others when you need somebody to pray for you? Can you still love people when it ain't nobody there loving you? Can you lift up others when every time you get up it's because you had to pick yourself up by your own booster? Can you do it while fasting? being in isolation, and being in temptation. Here's third and final, when Jesus fasted, here's what he did, write this down. He stunned the enemy. He stunned the enemy. Watch this, cold-blooded, then I'm done. All right? The enemy comes at him three different times, three different ways. You know, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Jesus cut it down cold. Cold. On the spot. With the word. Can I say this in passing? If you're going to fight the enemy, you don't need your fist. You need faith. You don't need hands. You need the word. Right? After Jesus this feel good thinking about telling it to you. After Jesus fought the enemy with spiritual warfare, cold-blooded, the Bible says, Mr. Jimmy, he left him for a season. You don't know what that means. Had you known what that meant, you would have shouted about that. Hold up. I thought... Then what they told me growing up. Here it is. You ready for this? The devil always busy. Right, right, right. He always on his job. The devil never takes a break, never goes on vacation, never sleeps. Always up on the job until I read Luke 4 and 13. Because Luke 4 and 13 showed me, taught me, helped me to understand that sometimes, Miss Bunny, the only reason the devil is busy is because he knows that there's something that he got that can keep you busy. Ooh. He, he knows that when he goes into his bag of tricks, one of them tricks gonna get you. So he keeps hitting you with the same thing because he knows that you've not been able to war against what he threw at you. The problem is, when he matched up with Jesus, he went into his bag of tricks and he threw out one trick, Jesus shut it down, block it, boom, boom, boom. Came with another one, boom. Thought he was gonna get him with the boom. Jesus shut it down. Bow down and worship me, boom, Jesus shut it down. Turn these stones into bread, boom, Jesus shut it down. Jump off this mountain, boom, Jesus shut it down. And then the devil looked in his bag and realized wasn't no more tricks to throw. If you want to defeat the enemy, force him to run out of stuff to throw at you. I pray that you become so strong in God that Satan has to go back to hell and regroup. Scratch his head and think about it. And some of you, let me say this to encourage you, you're better than you think you are. Because a whole lot of stuff that used to get you, you can praise God. He don't get me with that no more. No, 
oh the devil is a lie he used to be able to get I used to be able to see that and go off as soon as I but now I've been walking with God long enough that I can just I can crush that one I can smash that one right there and the reason the enemy is so mad at you is because out of everything he tried to do to you you still looking good you still got some strength, you still got your swag, you, you still got your anointing, you still got grace on your life, you still got some power. High five your neighbor and tell him I made it, I, I made it. Yeah, I've been through the storm and yes, I've been through the rain and, and I had my share of ups and downs and I almost gave up, I almost threw in the tower, I almost laid down, I almost walked away, but something on the inside of me kept telling me to hold on and be still and eventually God was getting ready to fight my battles. And before you know it, I looked around and said, Devil, where are you? <laughs> oh my God. Listen, you know you somebody when you have to start looking for the devil. They told me that you ain't never got to look for trouble. Trouble will come find you. But that's only if you keep giving in to the trouble that he keep throwing your way. But grandmama them said, when trouble get in my way, I have to cry sometime. I lay awake at night, but here it is. That's all right. Tell them why it's going to be all right. Because Jesus will fix it after a while. He may not come when you want it. But when he shows up, when is it ever too late? God said, if you keep blocking what the enemy is throwing, eventually he going to run out of stuff to throw at you, and he'll leave you for a season. He'll leave you for a season. He'll leave you for a season. If the devil ain't bothering you, that just means he already got you. No, it don't mean he got you. It means I got the best for him. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen in here. Some of y'all ought to praise God because you see that in your future. You see that in your, it's about five or six. You see that in your future. I'm tired of my losing streak. I'm tired of every time the devil come around, I have to run away. I have to tuck my tail and run. The devil is a lie. In this season of my life, I'm not going to tuck my tail and run. I'm going to send him on the run to let him know that no weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper. He stunned the enemy, Miss Sheila. He stunned the enemy because Satan looked back and said, I tried this, and that joker gave me the word. I tried this, and Jesus gave me the business. I tried this, and he kept on not eating. I tried to turn him to the left, he turned to the right. I don't even know why, I don't even know why, I don't even know why to save the life of me, why he thought he could kill Jesus. Because he had already proven that no matter what you go into your bag of tricks to find, I squash everything. That's why I don't know why he keep coming after some of y'all. Out of all the things that you've been through I want to tell you on the fifth Sunday in June congratulations because you survived I might as well preach the worst season of your life just when the enemy tried to destroy you by flooding your life with misery throwing fiery darts that you could not seem to see but the difference is God wouldn't let it get you down he said his angels they were encamped all around for all night and all day I got angels keep watching 
over me, my Lord. Through many dangers, toils and snares, I've already come. Shake somebody's hand around you and tell them grace brought me safe the far. And grace is going to lead me on. If I had a little time, I'd testify. I've been through storm and rain. I've had heartache and I have pain. But through it all, I learned how to trust in Jesus. I learned how to trust in God. If I never had a problem, I wouldn't know it that God could solve it. I would not know what faith in God can do. If you're not too mean, slip your arm around your neighbor's shoulder and say, neighbor, I thank God for my mountains. I thank God for my mountains. I thank God for every mountain he brought me over. For every trial he seen me through. For every blessing I say hallelujah. Ooh, for this I give you praise. Cause here's the truth of it. When I look back over my life I should have been I could have been I would have been dead sleeping in my grave but oh he made oh death behave and if it had not been for the life who was on my side I, 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 I don't know where I'd be right now so look at your neighbor and high five your neighbor and say neighbor I don't know if anyone told you but I thank God for your life you're a survivor you have survived the worst seasons of your life. You've been broke, but you didn't lose your mind. You lost some friends, but you kept on going. Out of work, but you keep on striving. Been through the fire, but you don't smell like smoke. Been through the flood, but your clothes ain't wet. Grab your neighbor and shake your neighbor. Shake your neighbor and grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you want to know what a miracle look like, all you got to do is look at me. I've been blessed, kept, lifted, gifted, raised, he brought me all the way. Is there anybody here? You can praise God. Oh, I made it. I'm sorry if I get on your nerves, but I'm glad I made it. I'm glad. I'm glad I made it. I'm glad I made it. I'm glad I made it. Let's get.
get ready to go home, you ought to holler like a preacher. You ought to put one hand over your left ear and you ought to rail back and tell your neighbor, I'm glad I made it. I didn't think I was going to make it, but I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. Yeah. gonna preach one last sermon you already preached to your neighbor and you already preached to yourself this last sermon I want you to preach to the devil I want you to look down at the ground and tell the devil I'm still here you thought you were gonna destroy me but I'm still here I'm still standing I'm still praising I'm still walking, I'm still talking, I'm still worshiping, I'm still going, I'm still living, I'm still moving, I'm still on it, I'm still trying, I'm still praying, I'm still fasting, I'm still holding on to God's unchanging hand. Come a long way by the grave of love. Come a long way could have been dead. Sleeping in my grave, Lord, you made all death behave. It's by the grave of the Lord. Come a long way. I don't know what I do without the Lord. You ought to shake somebody's hand around you. Tell them I don't know what I do without Without the Lord, I'd probably be dead, sleeping in my grave. But I Behave. I don't know what I would do without the Lord. And when I think about it, it's just another day. the Lord, you ought to know that better than me, has 
kept me. I didn't do nothing to deserve it. It's just another day that the Lord, ooh, I feel that in my bones. He kept me. Just another day and trust him today. I wouldn't waste my time doing this if he wasn't real. He is a real God and he keeps real people like you and me on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't even know it, but you made it this far because you had an all-knowing, all-seeing God watching over you, keeping you. Watch this, even when you were far away from him. Can I say to you that if he'll watch you and keep you when you're not close to him, imagine what he'll do if you draw nigh to him today. If you're watching us, if you're in this room, and my heart bleeds in this moment because I don't want you to miss this harvest. If you've not given your life to Jesus, do that today. Do that today. Do that today. I'm not talking about joining our church. No pressure. None of that. But I do want to see you in heaven. And the only way you get there is through accepting Jesus Christ. Hey, I need to acknowledge I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I don't care how good you are. You're not good enough. None of us are good enough. None of us are good enough. Even if you've kept the Ten Commandments, you didn't keep them correctly. You didn't keep them correctly. Even if you didn't tell a lie of commission, when you didn't tell the truth at all, it was a lie of omission. You didn't keep it well enough. Maybe you've never robbed a bank, but if you picked up something that one yours and forgot to return it, you stole it in God's eyes. Maybe you've never killed anybody. He said, but if you have grudge and all against your brother for no cause, he said, I look at that just like murder because you killed the relationship. We kept them, but we've not kept them well enough. He says, maybe you've never slept with anybody. He says, but if you looked on a woman with lust in your eyes, he says, you've already done it. You're guilty. We stand guilty before God. All of us, no matter what commandment you name, we've broken it at some point or another. Maybe you didn't bear false witness, but you didn't know what you were talking about when you were talking. So it's so discord. You bear false witness against your brother. You spoke out of turn. You're guilty before God. I need to acknowledge I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Now what do I need to do about that? I need to go to letter B. I need to believe in my heart and see, confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus, that God has raised him from the dead in any and every sin that you've ever committed. He says, I already took care of that on the cross of Calvary. I just need you to acknowledge it. Would you do that today? If that's you, put in the comment section, I receive Jesus today. I acknowledge my sins my flaws, my shortcomings. Ask him to come into your life. If you're in this room right now, you've never done that. Make that decision today to accept Jesus as your savior and the Lord of your life. You saved me on the cross, but I give you permission to be my Lord. You can tell me what to do. You can tell me what to do, where to go, and I will never get an attitude about what you tell me to do. You are my Lord. You're my master. I'm your servant. You tell me what to do and I follow. Now, if you've given your life to Jesus, but you need a church home, you don't have a church home, 
This is a good one, I believe, for you today. For some reason, the Holy Spirit keeps drawing you back. He keeps drawing you back here. You listen, uh, go a lot of places, but for some reason, the Holy Spirit keeps drawing you back here. For some reason or another, it ain't the most attractive. We ain't the best to anything. But one thing we do know is how to love God and to love God's people. If you're feeling led by the Spirit to come, connect and commune with us, I would love to be your pastor. Put in the comment section, I want to join FCC. Either myself or somebody from our team will reach out to you, get your contact information, call you on the phone, pray with you, pray for you. And I would like to meet you in person, even if you can just come one time. Maybe you work on Sunday, but if you can get away one Sunday, come shake my hand and hug my neck. I want to meet you, lay my eyes on you, and let you know that I'm in your life for a reason. After you've done that, we say welcome home. Welcome to the body of Christ. Can we clap our hands for anybody that's making a decision right now, wherever you may be? Listen, we're about to give in this room. We're about to give and bless the Lord through the giving of our tithes, through our resources, through offerings, through our seed, whatever you like to call it. We just encourage you to get it in the ground today. If you're in a room, you need an envelope. Uh, one of our brothers will give you a tithe and offering envelope and or a pastor's love envelope. The offering envelope is what we give to God. It's, it's for operation purposes here in our ministry. The pastor's love, this is how I eat from week to week. So for those of you who would be so gracious to share in that, I appreciate that so very much. For those of you who have been doing that and those of you who are starting to do it, uh, those of you who will continue to do it, I appreciate you for um, blessing me personally. Our cash apps are on the screen. Dollar sign, the number four, W-O-R-D-C-C. That's our uh, operation giving. And then uh, there is dollar sign number four, future home number two, which is for our building project. Um, we also have Givelify. Givelify. Uh, go online to Givelify and type in the name of our church, which is Four Word Christian Center, F O R W O R D. I believe we're the only one of our kind. No one else has that name, all right? So the one that you see, that's us on Givelify for Word Christian Center. Thank you so much. And then you can mail it in. That's on the screen as well. You see it. Y'all know how we get. Yes, Lord. Whatever in your Today, if you are visiting with us, you have never signed our visitors list. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to go right over here to my left and to your right. Miss Sheila, lift your hand. That's who you will see. We're going to get some information from you. If, in fact, somebody invited you, a member of this church invited you, put their name on that sign in because on the third Sunday in September, we have the Ambassadors Award. This person was responsible for bringing the most people to church, whether they visited or joined, they get credit for that and they're gonna get a major award on the third Sunday in September for bringing people to church, all right? That's very important now, very important, very important. Also while we're doing that, let me give you a couple of announcements. Uh, we'll be in prayer every day this week, even on the 4th. We'll be in prayer at 8.04 a.m. every day this week. We will do Bible study Wednesday night, 6.45 p.m., uh, dealing with the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Please don't miss this lesson. I think it's going to be critical for all of our spiritual development, uh, upbringing, and furtherance. So make sure that you are on on Wednesday night. Also, if you have not signed up, uh, for a t-shirt on September the 15th, the third Sunday in September, we're celebrating our ninth year church anniversary. We still baby, y'all, we still baby, still young, uh, but we're gonna celebrate our ninth birthday on September 15th. If you would like to get a t-shirt, the t-shirts are $20.15 regardless of the size. Why are we doing that? It's to celebrate the fact that we started in 2015. 
That's the year our church started, 2015. So at least put your name on the list and your size, all right? You have until August the 4th to do this and to have them paid for. However, for those of you, you may have two or three people in your family, might be mom trying to pay for two or three different kids. That might be a little steep. Put, put a little sign and say, hey, sponsorship. Just say, oh, put an S right there. Oh, no, sponsorship, sponsorship, sponsorship. Or a little X or something to let uh, our administrators know to put you on the list because there are some people who have agreed to be sponsors just in case somebody cannot afford a T-shirt. If you would like to be a sponsor, um, see Miss Tanya after church. See her, let her know that you want to be a sponsor or if you actually want to place an order for your T-shirt, see her today as well but we need these done by august the 4th august the 4th let the church say august 4th if you come up here on august 5th and say i want a t-shirt i have the right to tell you uh -uh. you just better wear a t-shirt that's got the same colors as ours amen because it's, it's too late after august 4th i'm not gonna put that extra work on on my team to go and try to create a miracle after we've got this bulk order in place okay so august 4th we want everybody to get one for those of y'all that watch us we got some honorary members we got some folks in north carolina we got some people in texas some people in atl uh virginia that check us out part of us they get t-shirts they're gonna be repping they forward t-shirts in different cities and states boy that make you boy feel like we doing something real don't ever discount what you're a part of. You don't know how many people you're reaching. So that means we got to go at least one weekend to Texas, to Georgia, to Virginia, and to North Carolina and just hold a service out there one weekend. We all got to go out there. Those four locations. Everybody else trying to join in now. No, we don't do it four at a time now. We're going to go out there and do some services with those people that may not be able to come here, but we'll come to you. We'll come to you. All right, I love y'all so much. Thank you so much for all that you do. Let's stand. I don't think I missed anything. If I did, I'll text you later. By the way, September 14th, we're having a community fellowship day out here on our lot with the bouncy houses and tug of war and bingo for everybody that's 65 and above that want to play chess for the people that think they know how to do something with me on that. Basketball, all of that kind of stuff is going to be happening out here on our lot. We'll be holding a meeting probably in the next week or two because we need everybody's participation. We need people to be over these different stations. So when that phone call comes, I need you to sort of clear your schedule for a few hours maybe to, to meet about this because we want it to be huge. We want it to be successful on that day. And there's going to be a drawing as well, three different prizes. But you got to be subscribed to our YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, pull out your cell phone while I'm giving a benediction so you don't forget and subscribe. Go to YouTube, type in the name of our church, and subscribe to it because that's the way you enter into the drawing. If your pastor tell you to do something, it's probably because there's a good reward behind it, all right? So subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right, I love y'all. Father, thank you for the eyes I've seen, ears I've heard, and hearts I've felt. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for the witness that we'll go out and share. Thank you for the worship experience today. You have blessed us, and we thank you so much. We count it a joy that we came here today amidst the, the inclementness of weather and conditions and all of that. God, we vow to praise you through the good and the bad, whether happy or sad. You set an example. You were fasting while being tempted, while being in isolation. Truly now, we can endure the cross and despise the shame as you did on our behalf. Bless you for every person that has sown today uh, physically into this worship financially into this worship but most of all they have sown spiritually into this worship with every amen and every thank you jesus and every hand that was raised today god we participated in this moment and i pray god that you would do your people a favor that as we leave from this place but never from your presence go with us stand by us lead us guide us direct us protect us provide for us cover us saturate us with your grace and your mercy and until we shall meet again, 
continue to hold us in the palm of your hand. We bless you and we give you praise as we count it done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I love y'all. Be good. All guests and visitors, please go over here to my left. Thank you.